Alexandra from Switzerland. Hey, Instagram, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Come on back, come on back. Uh, what is today's topic? Julie asks. Julie doesn't know me well. The topic will, will flow. But it is related to flow, so let's begin. Hey, Instagram, come on back in. Welcome for my viral wisdom number 56. I try to do this every Sunday and uh, sometime on a Sunday because it's hard to commit. I'm so excited to be with you all. I know that all of us have gone through so much and continue to go through so much. And, and, I, and what I say can be a bit brutal for people to hear, but I think it must be heard anyway. What's happening right now seems like the world has gone mad. <laughs> it seems like everything is insane. But here's the truth. The truth is that nothing is that wasn't already. Okay, and this has to do with your own. Nothing can be without it already have been, been in the works. In Buddhism, there's a saying that uh, goes like this. Everything was already set to happen. The conditions just hadn't presented themselves. Another saying in Buddhism that I love is that the glass is already broken. But the conditions for it to split apart just hasn't, haven't shown up. So everything that is already was. The glass is already broken. The conditions for it to fully crack and splinter across the floor haven't yet appeared. So it seems like the world is going mad, but that is an illusion. The world was mad. We were mad. And now, because we are sitting still, now because we are all on the edge of our greatest fears, we are looking from the precipice of the cliff and for the first time, universally, globally, there is no net. And this is why we are thinking that something new is amiss. Something unprecedented. Well, it is unprecedented because it's global and universal. But the elements of what is happening in terms of us standing at the edge of the cliff and looking over and going, holy, there is no net. This is not new. This is the essence of life. Now, this is an uncomfortable truth, but I must say it because when you get comfortable with it, you actually liberate yourself. The truth is that life is always on the precipice with no net. There is no net. There is no net on the outside. But those things, Times Square being open, Broadway shows, your children going to school, yeah? Chop, chop, let's go to school. These routines created this somnolent intoxication. We were like zombies thinking, ah, we have predictability. We have constancy. We have consistency. I'm in control. My life is smooth. Look. I got my kids to school on time. And then I have six hours on my own if you're a stay-at-home mom. But all of this was already broken. The conditions for it to splinter, shatter, break across your floor had not yet arrived. Let me know if you can still hear me. I'm going to take a pause because the Instagram people are saying it's not working. Well, let me see Instagram. for connection.
Okay. So, okay, now I'm going to leave the Instagram. Instagram people, go to Facebook. So understand this. This is absolutely crucial to understand if you are to revolutionize this moment in time. But the choice is if you are willing, wanting, craving a revolution in your life. See, most of us are not craving growth, are not craving a quest, are not craving a deep dive. Most of us just want to be complacent. But if you are one of those who is always seeking, what am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to grow from this? Then for you, you must understand that this is nothing new. And if it, if it appears new, it is because you were asleep before. But now for the first time, you can't sleep. You can't sleep because you see, now the edge of the precipice is jagged. It's pokey. It's hurting. It's bloody. Right now it's uncomfortable. But how can growth occur without discomfort? How? Everyone wants to grow. Yeah? But nobody wants discomfort. The two cannot, <laughs> cannot occur without each other. Discomfort, growth. You want growth? Discomfort. If you don't want growth, you, life will still push you, but you can still stay blanketed. But if you want to grow, what is growth? What is growth? Growth is new, correct? Growth is, because it's new, what is new? What does new mean? New means unprecedented. Unprecedented means unexpected. Unexpected means holy F. What the F do I do here? Do you understand? It requires great discomfort. What is discomfort? Pain. Sir, there's no two ways about it. The skin must be shed. The caterpillar must die for the exquisite freedom of the butterfly. And then the butterfly dies soon too, because we are eternally transformative beings. But this moment in time that we are experiencing as a globe, it's uncomfortable, it's treacherous, it's traumatic, it's a tragedy. But with it comes an enormous opportunity, a surge. Nothing is non-dual. Everything is, nothing is dual. Everything is non-dual. Everything. So with this comes this. With life comes death. With death comes life. With life comes death. It's both together. And in the past, we didn't want to see the death, but the death was everywhere. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. The only difference before is that it happened to house number 62 on that block and then house number 15 on this block. So we didn't see it. And because we were dull and addicted and distracted and so consumed with our ego that we didn't connect the dots. We didn't connect the dots. But now for the first time, because we are still forced into timeout, forced into lockdown, forced into coming back home with no trinkets, no baubles, no adornments. We are stuck. But this is in spiritual terms called sitting still. Sitting. You know, in spirituality, in Buddhism, they like sit. And you're like, how much longer? Mm -hmm. More and more. Right? Try meditating for an hour and you're going to die. Why? Because you've never sat still for so long. We don't know how to sit still with ourselves. Now, there are no friends. Where are our friends? They are all potential carriers of this disease. So now they are the enemy, right? which is a good thing. Listen, 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 listen. This is a good thing because our friends, our movie theaters, our restaurants, our shopping, our Macy's, our this, our that, gone. It, they needed to go because they were keeping us from understanding our true selves. You understand? This detox was essential. This is the only way because we were out of control. This doesn't just happen, right? We are on lockdown. Why? Because the excess was tremendous. Right? The more we feel the pain of this lockdown, what does it mean? Everything is non-dual, meaning that the other side is right there. If we were on lockdown and we're feeling the pain of I can't go here and I can't go there and I can't go everywhere, it's because we were going too many places. Okay? Our children were going too many places. Our children had too many things to do. Right? 
this is not normal. We were not normal people. <laughs> we were not normal. When I wrote my book, The Conscious Parent, several people told me that, oh, don't feel bad. Your work will not reach far because it is not the zeitgeist. The zeitgeist meaning the timing. It's not the timing for this book. I wrote my book 10 years ago almost, okay? I conceived of it 10 years ago. Therefore, I conceived of it 20 years ago. And I experienced tremendous resistance because I was like talking nonsense. I was talking about uh, turning the traditional paradigm of parenting and all institutions on their head because I could see the the psychosis of it i could see the 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 delusion of it i could see the insanity of it but my my veins here used to pop because no one would listen and so when corona came i was like aha uh -huh, now here's the zeitgeist but it's painful it is painful because we were in so much excess so much denial so much wasted, saturated in nonsense of life, we did not understand that life could not be upheld in that way any longer. We were racing against the clock, people. We were already destroying ourselves, already extinct, extinct to our spirit, extinct to our soul, extinct to our inner stillness. And so, Nothing is without the other. Extreme here, extreme here. This is it. Extreme this, extreme this. It, it, they go together. Nothing comes about with nothing. You understand? Everything is what was. The conditions are now clear. The conditions are now met, but the glass was already broken. Nobody just goes mad. I say this about our children, you know, I have a 17 year old who's always upset, but I can see why <laughs> I can see why, because she's living in a world where she can't understand the insanity of it. And this generation, her generation, these young people today, they are the no generation. They're like, no, they're sick and tired of us. We, our generation, my age, 48 and 48 and above us. Our parents, our grandparents were the yes. We said, they, we just said yes because we were in lack. We were in scarcity. And we have created a morass, a cesspool of bullshit, junk, toxicity. Okay? So now is the opposite. Oh, so much this way. Now everything gets pulled back from us. This is not coincidental. This is not just, oh, oh. Suddenly everyone in America, especially, has gone mad. Oh, no, 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 no. Nobody suddenly goes mad. This was already in the making. Yes. And that's why for the first time, white people, black people, rich people, poor people, Botox people, skinny people, fat people, obese people, diseased people, non-diseased. For the first time, democratically, we've all had to shut up and stay home. Zip it and stay home. And what happened in America right after for the first time, everyone democratically sat home. What happened? What happened? The most amazing thing happened in America. For the first time, we saw the pus in America. We saw what was right underneath the surface that we did not want to see before. And let me tell you, if it had not been for this time out and we were all in Barbados and Turks and Caicos and Malaysia or wherever people want to go for their vacation and the kids packaged in summer camp and all the adults so excited to be on their own. If that had happened the old way, we would have never seen the pus of America as we have seen the way we have seen and then globally seen. This is what is the most beautiful but terrifying thing of sitting still and why we don't sit still. We don't sit still because when you sit still, you're forced to look within. When you're forced to look within, you begin to realize, holy shit, I am full of, of contradiction. I am full of bias. I'm full of prejudice. I'm full of lack. I'm full of fear. And then you begin to see it in your relationships. Holy moly, I don't like my kid. I don't like my husband and my wife and my whatever. I don't like my body. Oh, but this is a good thing. See, then we get scared. 
Then we go drink and eat too much. When we reach the second layer of like, hmm, I don't really like this world I'm living in. I don't like my president. I don't like the country. I don't like the people. I don't like my neighbors. Now we want to run. Now we want to react. But here is where we have to go deeper. We have to go even deeper. We can't react and blame because that's where everyone is getting stuck. We're all getting stuck at this second stage. We look inside. We don't like what we see. And now we want to project the blame on everyone else. Yes. All the white people in America, not all. Most of the white people in America are being called to look in the mirror. They don't like what they see. Reaction. Correct. People of color called to look in the mirror. We don't like what we see. Reaction. Now we enter blame and projection, which is what we're seeing in America. Lovely. But this is not, this is not the work. We have to go deeper. And deeper means number one co-creation. How have I helped co-create my reality right now? How have I been accountable? Where am I accountable? And then even deeper, how do I enter unequivocal, unconditional compassion, healing, and love, right? This is where we need to go. And when we get to this deeper place of compassion, healing, and love, the way to get here, the process to get here by nature, will take out all the extraneous bullshit in life that we have paid attention to till now that we should never have. All the cosmetic industry beauty products, all the entertainment industry rubbish and distraction, all the money we have spent on the ego and we haven't spent on our healing. And when we get here, we realize, what was I so focused on? Like, what was I caring about? The next pair of high heels? How I look to person X who I haven't seen now for four months and really don't miss. What was I craving? Who is essential? What is essential? Who am I truly? Do I like myself in my own skin? Can I make an impact in the world? What is my world about paycheck to paycheck or is it about purpose in service? Can I be of service? And now you're beginning to be forced to ask if you're willing, if you're daring, Deeper questions, deeper questions. So this is where we need to go. This is the place, but we're getting stuck in reactivity. Why are we getting stuck in reactivity? Because everyone is in their mind, in their ego, not everyone. Most people are in their ego. What is right and what is wrong? Me versus you. And as long as we're stuck there, we're again replicating the same patterns that got us here. We got here because of excessive consumerism. We got here because of excessive greed. We got here because of a departure from stillness and nature. We got here because we forgot who it is we truly are, that we are all elementally the same. There is no white, there is no black. We are one, but we created a white supremacy and a black inferiority to only address the racial inequity in America, which was a delusion. Right? There is no white supremacy. There, white people are not better. Black people are not worse. We got here because of separation. Me against you. I'm better, you're worse. Hierarchical dominance based on delusion, based on ideology. So I'm very pleased with myself because I recently broke down the word ideology. I, dia, dia is a, is a connotation of God, logi, right? We are stuck in an I am God logi. And as long as we are stuck there, we will create separation. So even though I want to create separation against the Trumpets and the Republican people um, or the people who don't do this or don't do that, I know that that is an illusion because there is no enemy out there. There is no enemy out there. We have to elevate and stop blaming and projecting, stop blaming and reacting, stop blaming. No, the unconscious person out there is a part of you, part of who we were. I remember being unconscious. Therefore, this person is not my enemy. Therefore, my goal and my role is not to blame and project and react. My only goal and role is to elevate, illuminate, evolve, radiate. Damn it. Even though I don't want to. It's so much easier to bitch and complain and moan and groan. But no, we can't do that because we got here because of that separation. We got here because of separation. The only annihilation for the future is unity, 
unfortunately. But unity can only happen through real acknowledgement of the delusion. So we have to first heal the broken parts of us. So we have to first say black lives matter. It doesn't mean white lives don't matter. It just means black lives haven't mattered as much as white lives. So now we have to say black lives matter. We have to look at the wounds in our own lives. How have I been bullshitting to myself? How have I been living in fear and scarcity in my own life? I have to look at my own inequities, my own prejudices, my own biases between me and my child, me and my partner, me and my own body. We have committed warfare against our own body. We have committed warfare against our own minds. We don't believe we are divine, you see? How are we going to believe our children are divine? How are we going to believe others are divine? The only way to solve any problem in the world is to heal yourself. I promise you it's not a cliche. I know it sounds so cliche, just love yourself. It's the truth because when you heal yourself and understand that you are only the same, as the caterpillar, the soil, the worm, the virus, the bacteria, and the sky, the sun, and the leaf. And that this, I am a Catholic, I am a Jew, I am a Muslim, I am black, I am white, is an illusion created by this construct of the modern era by man. We will continue unless we see that. And when we see that, when we understand when we heal ourselves, we see ourselves as an inextricable part of nature. When we see ourselves as the same as the grasshopper, the caterpillar and the poop and the bacteria and the virus, we understand that there is no surface difference. The surface difference is only an illusion. The true unity already exists. It already exists. The only reason we can't see unity is because we are blinded by this mind, by the ideology our ideological differences because we each think we are God. I, Dia, I am God, Logi. This is our delusion. This is what I write about in Conscious Parenting. The parent thinks they're God, right? The parent thinks they're hierarchical. They don't understand this child is here to teach you, right? And that's why people said when I said this about in my books that it is not the time. Well, is it the time now? Is it the time now to see our ideology is the, is the problem. Whenever you come from mind, you create separation because the mind is, is limited. The mind is ego. It sees only the surface and it gets beguiled by the surface and puts identification on the surface, on the role, the color of the eyes, the skin, the cheekbones, the Botox, the wrinkles, the fat, the cellulite, the color, the wealth, the bank account, the house size, the car, cars in your garage all an illusion this is all fake fakery fakery fuckery okay it doesn't exist it's a lie but we're all falling for it hence we have racial wars hence we have people who think i'm better than you how dumb is that this is the scourge the scourge is supremacist thinking it doesn't it's not only white people though it's all people please come to my country india all brown but oh, so color savvy, so color uh, supremacist, fully colorist, brown people, brown my people. Oh, this shade of brown, that shade of brown, this shade of beige, delusion, right? What well, Indian people don't like when I call them out. Now all my Indian people will be writing to me, huh? right? But I, I call out my people and you call out your people and call out yourselves. That's what we need to do. We all need to call out our people there's no such thing as our people you know i'm not indian i was just born there sorry i'm not american i just live here what i am is a child of the earth and a child of nature and i understand all these maps and geological geographical distances are for ease of comfort for the simplistic mind you believe in that god i believe in this god okay yes okay it's simplistic thinking there is no such thing. It's all one, 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 one interdependent ca causal web of cause and effect. There is no separation. You are me, I am you. It's just, we're just, we, I just can't see you yet. But you're there. You're part of me, I'm part of you. And until we understand this basic truth, there will be continued ideological warfare because ideology, ideas, and your idea that you are God separate you. 
It is the scourge. This is the scourge. So now, till we get this lesson, we will repeat the same lessons over and over and over again. And maybe that's what we need to do. And no problem. Because I frankly don't want to go back and in, back into normal, the, the world that's normal, because I see it, that world completely abnormal. I rather just stay in time out and come out either to, to all be destroyed or come out new. Because I don't want to go back to that bullshit. Do you? Honestly, honestly, do you want to be puppeteered by the validation from others? Do you want to be puppeteered by your bank account, puppeteered by your relationships, puppeteered by fear, forever living in scarcity, in comparison, in separation? I don't want to go back to that world. I'd rather just be in timeout and wait it out, you know? So my offering to you is that nothing that you're seeing right now is new. So don't be in this mindset that it's new because this mindset that it's new creates victimhood. <gasps> like something is happening to you. Nothing is happening to you. This is life. This is life on this dimension. It always was, always will be until there is a revolution in consciousness. And this is what is being hearkened, called for, asked for to rise into a new consciousness. But until humanity does this, but it starts with you and me. A rise in you and me. And if you don't take charge of it and you wait for the Republicans and they wait for the Democrats and the rich people and the... No, there is no rich people. There are no Democrats. There are no Republicans. These are all labels put for ease for the simplistic mind. The, the transcendent mind understands what lies beneath. What lies beneath is a unity that has been forgotten. And this is the big lie. This is the big forgetting. This is the mirage. And until we understand that the unity is all there, we can't see it. No point. No point. Until we see it, they're cobwebs in front of our eyes. Why? Because we're attached to ideology, attached to our belief systems, which are all deluded, all deluded. And until we can go beneath to see that what is already here, there is unity everywhere. Everything is beautiful. It just is life. But we cannot see it. So we put labels and identifications and forms and categories and checklists and create the havoc that we have. There is no black, there is no white. Truly, if we got that, we would see one. But now we can't. We are not there. Now we can't just say, okay, let's just see one. No, 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 no. Now, because we have not seen one for so long, we have to go back and heal. And how do we go back and heal and repair? By acknowledging, by making amends, by taking action. And that's what is asked from each one of you. How are you taking action to heal and repair the inequities in the world? Don't just complain. Don't complain. If you don't like your neighbors, knock on their door. Talk. Illuminate. I dare you. On your Facebook profiles, on your Facebook platforms, Instagram, post, post, post. And then you'll get to see who your true tribe is. Don't be afraid to lose people. I'm losing people like... You know, like I, I lose my youth every day. Every day, a few more years of youth gone. Yeah, it's okay. It's expendable. People like youth is expendable. What is truly needed is courage. Courage is not expendable. Daring, taking a risk, speaking the truth. These are not expendable. These are not expendable. But it starts with you. Don't look, don't put on the news. Don't put on the news. What, what is the news going to do? What's new in the news? <laughs> the news is one more version of bullshit. Don't look for solace in your, in your president or prime minister, especially if you live in this country that I do. Don't look, but don't expect. He's not your father. They're not your mother. The only mother and father lies here, here inside you. You have to now grow up. We are all adults, time to adult. The healing starts here. When you heal yourself, you spread healing. When you spread healing, it passes on. And this is the vaccine. This is the vaccine we're looking for. The vaccine we're looking for is the vaccine of a renewed consciousness. So you have the vaccine. Are you using it? Use it, inject yourself, spread it. That's the real vaccine that will last. This corona is coming and going. Tomorrow it'll be the bubonic plague. Then it'll be depression. Then it'll be anxiety. Who cares? That's on the outside. The truth is here. How are you living your life? How big is your heart? How loving are you? How much do you see unity? If you see unity, unity will manifest because it's already there. You just can't see it. Okay, guys, that's my viral wisdom vomit for today. And I will be back next week. 
If you want to learn more about my teachings, I seriously recommend and advocate that you become a conscious parenting coach and help me to spread this message out into the world. Be an ambassador of change. Do something. Take action. If not my course, take somebody else's course. But try to channel yourself into alignment with service. It is only service that is going to change this world. Service with a renewed consciousness. So if you're sitting at home, wondering, twiddling your thumbs, yeah, you don't have money, none of us do. Okay, but how can I channel myself? Ask yourself, how can I channel the next few years of my life to be of greater purpose, to be of greater service? And sorry to toot my own horn, but my coaching institute is how you can access service. I say it unabashedly, my mother always says, how can you be so so unabashed? You know, she's Indian and she she always tells me, you can't just be like shameless about it. I'm like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. When I know I have something good that can help people in the world, I am going to write about it, talk about it, spread it and share it. So I do this in all my posts, in all my videos. And I'm telling you, if you need purpose, see if becoming a conscious parenting coach is for you because I need help. I cannot be spreading this message on my own. I need people out there in the world spreading conscious parenting. Conscious parenting is the answer. There is no other answer. Sorry. Consciousness is the only answer. Okay, guys. Thank you for listening. I'll be back next week. Bye, guys. Bye, Instagram. Bye, guys. <laughs>